So this is the uh, Food and Drug Administration complaint number five. Now, because I did not mention at all Vapors TV in this particular complaint that I'm doing on the screen, I did not give any information in regards to personal and or business information in regards to uh, Anthony that runs that particular channel on the Vapors um, TV. I can actually show you the entire, the entire FDA complaint um, that I will actually send to the FDA. Now, there are atta attachments, which I'm not going to show you, which will be sent to the FDA. But as far as the complaint, I will show you the entire complaint. So you see exactly what it looks like. One of these things when I actually send, you know, one out that's, you know, all intact, like I do with all the FDA complaints. Now, this one is a rather interesting one. This one took me about a couple hours to do, but I was able to pull it off because of my brilliance. <clears throat> I don't mean to uh, pat myself on my back. Yes, I do. But anyway, um, so this is uh, amazing, and they may very well wind up switching their website around but this um i have enough attachments i have enough information that i will uh send to the fda that all, all it will do to them is actually uh, make it worse for them because of um it shows that their trick their trickery and they're underhanded and they're illegal Oh, this company is very, very extraordinarily illegal. I put this type of this particular company up with uh, along the rungs of, um, say, um, you know, NVR Network uh, slash uh, Vaping Miniman making e-liquid in his apartment. This is just as bad as that. In fact, this is probably worse than that. Yes, even worse than what Vaping Miniman did. But it's, ba it's basically along the same line, but it's, it's even worse. It's even worse. So anyway, I'm going to read it to you. It's self-explanatory. Like I said, I, don't, I, I, I will show you the entire complaint because I do not include uh, Vapors TV or Anthony that runs the Vapors TV in any shape or form. So um, this is, um, I'll be sending, uh, I'll be following this uh, FDA complaint right after the video. So it says, uh, May 24, 2019, a Food and Drug Administration Center for Tobacco Products, to whom it may concern, I would like to bring this complaint from a concerned consumer to the attention of the United States Food and Drug Administration Center for Tobacco Products, a domestic retailer and manufacturer in the United States, which is manufacturing and selling vapor products, electronic nicotine delivery system ends in the United States, which have a manu which have manufactured finished finished product dates post August 8, 2016, without FDA marketing orders. Also, this manufacturing retailer are making health claims on their website as well as permitting free sampling of their vapor products to their in-store customer. Also, this manufacturer retailer business is not registered with the Food and Drug Administration as a tobacco establishment under any of its limited liability company names. This manufacturer retailer also is committing trademark violations with their e-liquid products as well not posting on their website, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Vapors Electronic Smoke Shop, LLC, located at the following business address. Let's face that. Sorry about that. Uh, 3308, uh, and you see the Avenue Suite E, Oregon. I'm making sure that I correct that in the uh, my other complaint. Uh, Ohio, and then you see it. And Vapors Electronic Smoke Shop, LLC, Vapors Super Center, Vape Super Center, and Vapors are all doing business at the following address, and you see it on the page. And then you see the phone number, then you see the email, 
and then you see the name in charge, statutory agent name, trade name, register, and president, Michael Stanley, I don't know, you try to pronounce that. Uh, date of birth, October 19th, 1960. Well, I always do the date of birth is to show that the person is over the age of 18. So FDA is interested in that kind of information. Anyway, so it says the following web pages are from Vapors One website, which show the company's products and service and are federal statute violations. See attachments. And the, the attachments are uh, that I sent to the FDA, but I'm not going to show you guys that. Some of it's very um, detailed information, so I can't share that stuff with you. But but I could show you this entire uh, complaint here, though. So as far as trademark violations, and then you see the link, it says Black Cherry Kool-Aid e-liquid. The distinct flavor of, of delicious black cherries with that Kool-Aid tang. Now, they're actually showing you this. This is amazing on their website. Also, Blue Dew e-liquid, Baja Blast. It's like the popular soda but it's only sold at your favorite taco establishment. You don't have to be eating tacos to enjoy this do with a blast of lime. Hmm. Look at that. It's right on the website, guys. Whatever happened to the blacklist? <clears throat> anyway, uh, so you see the link, and then it says straw burst e-liquid by burst. Straw burst e-juice by burst is quite literally bursting with unrelenting flavor that will blow you away in almost any package of assorted taffy candies. Strawberry is usually the best of them all. Burst has brought the joy of finding that pink wrapped candy to e-liquid form, so now you can make it last all day long. Is it trademark violations, guys? Another link, Vapor Dew e-liquid. You know this great pop in the classic green bottle, Dew. And this e-liquid tastes just like it, cool and refreshing. These are actual pictures that are off of their website. Now their health claims. And then you see the particular link. It states on their webpage, quote, our mission here at Vapors is to provide the safest electronic cigarette experience on the market today. Whether you're looking to quit smoking harmful tobacco products, join the electronic cigarette experience, or find a better solution for your current electronic cigarette needs, Vapors is here to serve you. We are here to provide the smoothest and safest transition. We want to help you understand that not all electronic cigarettes and e-liquids are e equal. Our friendly staff here is to educate you and to help you with any questions you may have about our electronic cigarette brands and manufactured and sealed, no store clerk mixing, FDA compliant, e-liquid products. We offer our community many discounts and specials each and every day on electronic cigarettes, e-liquids, accessories, and supplies. With our customer friendly hours, there is no need to worry. We only carry the highest quality and affordable authentic name brand electronic cigarette and e-liquids on the market. Step back from the toxins and take in the vapor at vapors. And then uh, emphasis added. And then there's another link. Now on the website it states, smoking e-cigarettes is one of the most effective ways to quit smoking tobacco, satisfying, satisfying nicotine cravings, while allowing the user to inhale and exhale vapor, much like they would cigarette smoke. Roughly 96% of smokers quit successfully when switching to electronic cigarettes. Also says, e-cigarettes are an affordable substitute and effective non-smoking aid. Vapors Electronic Cigarettes and E-Liquids shop offers hundreds of flavors and organic e-liquids ranging from classic tobacco to mint watermelon, mocha, cheesecake, pina colada, and so many more. Whatever you're craving, we have an e-liquid for you, emphasis added. And then regards to free sampling, this is also on their website. 
reports and testimonials. I enjoy the fact that you can try all their flavors before you buy them. I originally started e-cigs with Revolver, but I switched to Vapors now because of that. Also, what swayed my, my decision is their prices are better and their products last a lot longer, emphasis added. Also there says good, knowledgeable staff and the only place I have been to where they let you taste the product before purchase, emphasis added. And it's house blend manufacturer. This is a testimonial from a customer. Excellent shop. Sorry about that. I know I'll correct that in my other, my official FDA complaint. Anyway, excellent shop. The guys are super nice. The shop is clean and comfy, and they make their own juice, which is certified organic. Great flavors and good prices, but the service can't be beat. Emphasis added. And then I, as you see, the asterisk here goes to this asterisk here. It says, Vapors 1 is not registered as a retailer or manufacturer with the Food and Drug Administration as a tobacco establishment. Nicotine warning. And then I'll give the link. On Vapors 1 homepage website, there is no wording which states this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is, nicotine is an addictive chemical. The above listed examples show the intent and reckless disregard of the federal statute. This Family Smoking Prevention Tobacco Control Act of 2009, as well as the FDA final rule, because the above listed company, Vapors One, have manufactured finished product dates post August 8, 2016, without any product reviews, that is, pre market tobacco application, substantial equivalence, and or exemption for substantial equivalence by the Food and Drug Administration and or the Center for Tobacco Products. In accordance with 21 United States Code 387KB, modified risk claim tobacco products, means any tobacco product that is sold or distributed for use to reduce harm or the risk of tobacco-related disease associated with commercially marketed tobacco products. Vapors One Company is making, oh, let me just have to do these little things, sorry about that. Very important, anyway. Uh, vapors, believe it or not, these little quotes and stuff is very important to the FDA. <laughs> you have to put it all into uh, all into shape here. Anyway, uh, Vapors One company is making modified risk claims without FDA approval by saying effective non-smoking aid, unquote, quote, safest transition, unquote, quote, safest, unquote, and, quote, FDA compliant, unquote, see attachment. In accordance with 903A1 of the FDNC Act, 21 United States Code 387CA1 and or Section 903A7A of the FDNC Act, 21 United States Code 387CA7A, Vapors 1 e-liquid products, that is specifically its labeling and or advertising is false or misleading, misbranded, see attachment. In accordance with 21 Code of Federal Regulations, the CFR, 1140.16 D1. No manufacturer, distributor, or retailer may distribute or cause to be distributed any free samples of cigarettes, smokeless tobacco, or any other or other tobacco products. Emphasis added. Vapors one customers in their testimonials testimonial stated you can try all their flavors before you buy them, and they let you taste the product before purchase. See attachment. In accordance with the following below cited federal statutes, Vapors 1, according to the customer testimonial, they make their own juice, which is certified organic, is a manufacturer which is not registered with the Food and Drug Administration as tobacco product. And then you have note, in case Vapors 1 changes their website wordage upon learning about this FDA complaint, all attachments and business contacts are evidence proof, that is, in case Vapors 1 decides to cover up their past transgressions, because they may very well do that. The way the website looks right now, tomorrow will be completely changed. But I have all the attachments, I have all the business contacts, and they'll still investigate it regardless. 
Anyway, then you see the usual laws of federal statutes that I, I include in all these FDA complaints. See, I would just say as a side note, as far as like vaping, when a man's selling his e-liquids from his apartment, see, he's not only a manufacturer, a guy who makes, modifies, or mixes a finished tobacco product, but he's also a retailer, see, because it means any person who sells, see, sells. I just want to say that as a side note. says, I do realize the United States Food and Drug Administration, as well as the Center for Tobacco Products, are undergoing the 2019 National Youth Tobacco Survey, so I do not expect the FDA or the CTP to act on this complaint in the short term, unless the FDA and CTP deems it appropriate to do so. But in the very least, the FDA and the CTP will have this information regarding Vapors 1, Vapors Electronic Shop, LLC, Vapors Supercenter, Vape Supercenter, Vapors, and or Michael Stanley, and you see the name on file, in case the FDA and or the CTP decides to enforce the pre-market tobacco application statutes, that is, new tobacco products. And you see the rest on the screen. I certify that the above statements are true to the best of my knowledge and belief. I further state that if any of the above statements made by me are maliciously false, I'm subject to punishment by law. That's that. This is a hell of a doozy. This is a hell of a doozy. Holy crap. Holy crap. I tell you, the FDA did some serious, like, mis you know, found a lot of misleading or, um, uh, misbranded products, you know, what all those like uh, the, you know, the uh, Mad Hatter juice and all that stuff in the past. But apparently they didn't come across Vapors1.com, but I certainly have. And, uh, well, guess what? Their cover is blown. The thing is, is they may very well change all of this on their particular, um, on their particular uh, website. But they will also come, um, the, this particular gentleman, uh, Michael Stanley, um, he will receive a FDA warning letter for sure. And they will also deal with his own vape shop. He has a few vape shops. He has six of them right now, and there is some more in the mix that he's going to be establishing. He's a rather interesting character. If you go into his past, you go deep into his background, he is a very, very interesting character. Um... Yeah, I won't go into detail on that, but what uh, information in, in regarding him will be included in those attachments that are, of course, given to the FDA. Um, and then um, there's like the testimonials. Uh, there are actual real names that are involved with that uh, that will also be uh, submitted in the attachment to the FDA. So these real people that left these comments in case they in case vapors one dot com decides to delete those particular testimonials um, from these real people with real names, uh, the FDA will have these real names and they can always inquire into those particular individuals, even if they have to subpoena them to do so. So this is a very, very interesting uh, when I when I took a look at their website, I, I sort of reading it and I started thinking, holy crap, then it's just like one thing after another. This guy on Vapors TV, this Anthony guy on YouTube, he is a sham. He is a con. Do not even pay attention. This guy is a real con artist, man. 
I don't even know if that's his real name. Who knows if that's even his real name? You guys always talk about me. I tell you, this guy, holy crap. He's always pushing this this particular uh, company, this uh, vape shop, always pushing them. But man, oh man, as you could see, just violation after violation after violation. Every single page that's on that YouTube, on that, uh, not YouTube, on that uh, website is just violation after violation after violation. It's just incredible. I've never seen it so bad before. I mean, I've been to a lot of websites. I've been to, believe me, in my processes of, of looking for you know, things for the FDA and stuff. And I tell you something, this is one of the worst ones because it's not just like one little thing. You know, it's not just like we're all giving free samples away. No, it's misbranding. It's, it's just a health claim, health claims, saying things like FDA compliant. You know how huge a fine that is? That is a huge fine. I mean, they'll receive an FDA warning letter. And they probably will correct this as soon as uh, Anthony watches this video. Because I'm sure he comes over here. I'm not sure if he subscribes to my channel or not. I could sort of tell that he watches my videos only because of um, he corrects himself in the next video. And I'm sure he'll be correcting this website. He'll like, he'll drop, he'll drop. If he's in his underwear right now, I mean, if he when he watches this video and he's in his underwear, he's going to forget to put his pants on and run over to the shop. And unless he's there already, and that's where he watches the his, uh, you know, all the YouTube videos and stuff. But the point is, he's going to drop everything. He's going to drop everything and run right to the owner and say, "Ba ba 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 ba." You better change all this stuff because we're going to get an FDA warning letter if you don't. And you watch this entire website is going to change. I'm going to give it like a week or two and then go back to it, see if it, they, or they had the brains enough to change it. It's going to save them to a degree. At least they corrected it because when they get an FDA warning letter, all the FDA warning letter is going to say is to correct these particular issues. Well, if they correct them before they get the FDA warning letter, all they have to do in response to the FDA warning letter is say that we corrected it. But that's only because of um, – of what I put up on the screen here. So I, I'm sort of almost hesitant about putting this particular FDA complaint up on YouTube and to let uh, to alert him uh, in regards to this. Um, I could do it as unlisted and only have certain individuals um, watch it, or I could do it as a private video. But, you know, the way I look at it, as long as vapors1.com, as long as they correct the situation, I mean, they have to really go back into their HTML and really rearrange all the stuff that's on their on their um, particular on their particular web page. They have to really straighten that entire web page out. That's just a web page. I can imagine what's going on in their vape shops. They will still get a, a FDA warning letter regardless if they change the website because in the vape shop the, apparently they are a manufacturer they're mixing their own e-liquids um they're also not registered with the fda as a tobacco establishment um and let's say they decide well today i'm going right uh, after this damn video here shit, I, I, i'm gonna go register as a tobacco establishment well the fda is going to question that because especially in regards to this complaint because they're going to say i see Maybe they got hip to this particular complaint that I'm showing on YouTube, and FDA will know that, and and they will they will see the the, the date that they actually established their tobacco establishment. So let's say uh, they registered the tobacco establishment. I don't know on May 28th of 2019, which is well past. It was I think it was back in 2017. I think it was September October, October I think it was of 2017 is when they should have or ought to have uh, uh, um, registered their, um, their uh, company as a, or their vape shops as a, um, mainly as a comp the company as a, um, as a tobacco establishment. Well, they're going to see that it's way past the time. So there's no excuse for that. They're going to get nailed on that regardless if they even register now or not. So, you know, this guy, Michael Stanley is a freaking fool on that. And then as well as, mixing or, and or manufacturing these products in his particular um, 
vape shop, uh, he has to uh, submit these ingredient listings um, to the FDA that's coming up in, um, I believe the date was moved to uh, May 8th of 2019, I believe it was moved. So he has to do the, uh, the um, ingredient listings for the small manufacturer. I'm sure he's a small manufacturer. I'm sure he's under 150 employees. He, he makes uh, um, less than $5 million a year. If he makes more than $5 million a year, then it's either or. Regardless, if, let's say he only has uh, 50 people that are working for him, but uh, he makes over $5 million a year. He has to um, do the uh, ingredient listings as well as the product listings. Um, his product listings aren't even uh, registered either uh, with the FDA. But the FDA will find all that out when they, when they do their own uh, investigation. So the, the key to all this is th this, this is a flagrant, a flagrant company that is in serious violation a federal statute is just incredible, just incredible. Because if you know what you what you're looking for when you go to these websites, as I'm very well, uh, quote unquote, educated or very well versed, um, when I go to these websites, I know what to exactly look for. I just one little word will nail your ass, like FDA compliant. What? What? No. No way your e-liquids are FDA compliant. No way. It's not possible. Anyway, so um, because you would have to have an FDA marketing order on these particular products and none have been submitted to the FDA. Uh, but it, it, this is just a gross, a gross um, a violation of federal statute up and down and all around. This guy here, Anthony on the Vapors TV, I tell you, this guy's a fraud. It's amazing. He, you know, like, like I want to let you go on this. You know, it's amazing. The very first video I showed, I mean, I watched of his. I thought, wow, this guy's pretty good. You know, I, I think I corrected one or two things, but I thought, wow, this guy is pretty good. You know, he's just like my channel. And then I started watching him, and I'm thinking, holy shit, this guy's just a bullshitter. He's just a bullshitter. And then, then I decided last night to. I said, well, let me go take a look at their particular website he's always pushing. And after reading it, I realized, holy shit, this website is in such violation of federal law, even if they change the website, it's not gonna save them. They're still, going, they're still going to receive an FDA warning letter. The only way for them to get out of an FDA warning letter is to actually literally go out of business. Will they do that? Absolutely not, probably. But they will wind up with an FDA warning letter. This is just gross misconduct. This is just gross violations of the federal statutes. And as a side note, why isn't this particular website, vapors1.com, on the blacklist? Hmm? I think Vape and Legion Network fell behind the times there. Hmm. Too busy doing their rally. Oh, it's going to fall through. Anyway, that's beside the point. So, yeah, this is just, just blatant, 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 blatant. Um, violations, just up and down, every, everything, health claims, health claims yet. Holy crap. Anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. And, and not only that, they don't even have the nicotine warning on their website yet. Amazing. Just amazing. You don't have to have a nicotine warning on your freaking YouTube channel unless you actually are employed by a particular manufacturer. Then yes, you should. You ought to, or a retailer, or, or even importer, exporter, distributor, or wholesaler. Yes, then you ought to have that nicotine warning. But unless you are actually employed by those companies that I just named off those titles, then no, you don't have to put nicotine warnings on your, your screen across your screen. That's bullshit. But these websites need to do that. They're required by statute to do that. Um because they're retailers or manufacturers or whatever have you. And vapors1.com don't even have that warning on their website. In freaking credible. I'm sure after Anthony watches this damn video, he's going to be like, uh-oh, we better put that warning letter, uh, warning, uh, nicotine warning uh, line up on our website. You know, it's going to be amazing. I'm going to visit that website in about a week or two and see if it's changed. 
for their own sake, they better change that website, I tell you. But they're still going to get nailed on FDA warning letters because there's many other things involved here other than that website. So anyway, I just wanted to share this with you, and you guys have a good one. Uh, bye, uh, bye.